What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with a, another Crypto Rhythm lesson. Today we are talking about base five, right? This is utter madness. So let's see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today we will learn Crypto Rhythm puzzles in base five by using problem solving strategies. This is utter madness. All right, our steps. These steps are going to be the same as the other uh, Crypto Rhythm lessons that we've done because our thought process is still the same, except we're gonna be working in base five. If you don't know what base five is, you probably should get out of this video and go do something else because your mind will be blowing. Step number one, we're gonna look at the operation. All right, we need to know if we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, because that's gonna help us with step number two, which is looking at place values to see if we can make a quick generalization. Can we eliminate possible answer choices based on regrouping or the properties of our operation? So we have to know what operation we're doing to understand the properties of the operation and what that means to regroup. Step number three, we're gonna use an organized list for each letter, okay? So after we eliminate our possible answer choices, we'll list out the rest of them in an organized list. Then step number four, we're gonna plug in an option to see if it works, okay? We might be guessing and checking, and that is totally okay. It's a great problem solving strategy. If that option does not work, we cross it off our list and keep trying. And step number five, figure it out. We gotta figure it out. We got whatever we need to do to solve the problem we need to do. Okay, here is practice number one. Now, I actually think, although it is kind of difficult for our brains to wrap around it, doing a base five crypto rhythm is a little bit easier than base 10. Why might you ask? Because there are only five digits that each of these letters can be instead of 10. So when we make an organized list, we have a lot less numbers to try. All right, so step number one, let's look at the operation. I see I'm adding. And then I also see when I added the fives place, because this is base five, so it'd be our ones place, our fives place, and then our 25s place. So when I added my fives place, I had to regroup. That is going to be very important. And it also tells me what A has to be. So our biggest digit possible would be four, okay? So let's just say that B and A were both four. We know that can't be possible because it's a crypto rhythm, but if it was, four plus four would be eight. And then when we regrouped, we'd have to take our five out and give it to our next place value, which would leave us with three left over, okay? So that means when I regroup to my 25's place, the only number that this could be because I was adding two digits only is one. I'm not gonna have to regroup twice because the biggest possible digit that I could use is four, and if I add that twice, it's only eight. So A has to be a one. Now let's take a look at what B and C are, okay? Now the great thing about this is I can replace all of my A's with a one now, all right? Now, I can't add anything plus itself to get one unless I had to regroup. So what number, when I add it, would give me a one in the ones place and then make me group regroup one five to the tens place? So if I do three plus three, that would be the quantity six, although six does not exist in base five as this digit, which means I'd have to regroup one group of five over here and give it to my fives place, and then I would have one left over. So the digit that C has to be is three. All right, just by making quick generalizations and looking at my regrouping, I have figured out two of my three numbers, which means now I don't need to make an organized list anymore. I'm just gonna plug this in, okay? And I'm gonna leave B uh, like that. C is three, that's three. And this would be one, right? One, one, and one. And then I can't forget that I had to regroup over here, okay? So what number plus one plus another one would make me regroup? I'm gonna plug in four for B and see if that would work. So I had, here's my one that I regrouped. I had four and I'm gonna add another one right here and that would give me six, which means I would have to regroup my five to the next place value with one left over. So I can see that B actually has to be four, all right? I love doing these crypto rhythms in base five because it's really focusing on your understanding of what's happening when you're regrouping. You can't just understand the standard algorithm and the shortcut of doing base 10. You have to think about what's happening when you're regrouping, but it's also fun because you don't have as many numbers to try, okay? So I didn't even have to make an organized list here. I just did step number one, step number two, and then I plugged in the option to see if it worked and I figured it out. 
Okay, let's take a look at practice number two. So here we have practice number two. And again, we want to first start by looking at the operation. Okay, so we're adding for this one. That's going to help me know uh, what I'm doing when I'm regrouping, when I'm looking at the place values, what properties I should be looking for. I'm going to be using my properties of addition. Now I'm going to look at the place values and see if I can make a quick generalization, right? Can I eliminate any possible answer choices based on regrouping or properties? Or do I know what one of the numbers is? just by looking at my place values. And I can see right here that when I added a plus b, I had to regroup to my next place value. And again, let me write down my different options over here. So we have a, b, c, and d. And I know that d has to be one, right? If I'm adding two digits, I'm only ever going to have to regroup one to the next place value, which means I can eliminate one as an option for all the rest of them. Now. The other thing to look at is I'm adding a, b for each place value, right? For the ones place, the fives place, and the 25s place. And you can see that here I got a sum of c, and here I got d, okay? Well, that means, obviously, if I was adding the same number but got a different result, that I had to have regrouped for both the fives and the 25s place. Then, obviously, I had to regroup over here as well, all right? So I know D is one. This helps me know that when I add one plus A plus B, I knew that my answer has to be 11 or six technically, because we're talking about base five, but it looks like what we would call 11, okay? Um, it's representing the quantity of six, which therein lies the dilemma of base five using our language. So what can you do, all right? So anyway, one plus A plus B means that I had to regroup to the next place value and that I had one left over. That also limits the options that A and B can be. So if I take this and I just think about it, that means A plus B have to equal a 10 in base five, which we really know represents a five, right? Because we have to regroup to the next place value and we have nothing left. Well, if I write down my base five options here, Again, skipping one, because I already know that D is one. That eliminates four for both of them, because four plus one would have been 10, but we know D is one. So A cannot be four, and B cannot be four. Okay, obviously A also can't be zero, and B can't be zero. That means A is either two or three, and then B would be the opposite. So now, just by using my place value knowledge, I've really narrowed down the ones that I have to plug in to C. So let me minimize this. And if you remember all the way back to our what is a cryptorhythm lesson, we know that sometimes for these, there is a unique solution, meaning only one could work, and then sometimes there could be a multiple solution. So let's go ahead and plug in A for 2, which means B would have had to been 3. Okay, so if I do 222 plus 333, and that should equal a 0 down here, which means we 0 would be, which means C would be 0. Then you had to regroup. One plus two is three, plus three is six. But remember, when we're talking about base five, we have to regroup after five, which is perfect, because we're gonna take the one group and give it to the next place value and have one left over. D had to be one, perfect. Same thing again, that's six again, which means D had to be one. We had to regroup, and obviously we had a D in the next place value. So I can see that if A is two, B had to be three and C had to be zero. So in fact, this combinations for the digits representing these letters works for this. I could see that each of these was a one, which means all my D's were one, all my A's were two, and all my B's were three, and then my C was a zero. So I know that one option is that A would equal two, B would equal three, C would be zero, and D would have to be one. Let's flip these though, because I'm thinking commutative property of addition, I'm probably going to be able to flip these and actually have multiple solutions for this question. All right, so now let's make A3, right? And we're gonna make B2, and when we add these together, let's see if it works this way, right? So obviously three plus two would be five, which means we have to regroup to the, net, the uh, fives place, which means I have zero left. Now when I add these, I get a six, which again means I need to regroup my five over here and have one left over. I need to regroup my five and then I'd have one left over. And obviously one plus zero plus zero would be one. And I can see that all my D's were uh, one, all my A's were three, all my B's were two, and C was still zero. So this one actually has multiple solutions. It could have been that A equaled two, B equaled three, C equaled zero, and D equaled one. 
or right so that's the first solution or the second solution is B or sorry a could have been 3 B could have been 2 and then C and D still would have been the same all right so I did make my organized list here but just because I used my place values and my generalization I only had to try two different options all right so being able to look first of all and know when you're regrouping because I'm using addition what that means and then also just writing down this equation right here and seeing that I was adding a and b for the ones the fives and the 25s but I got different answers knowing that I had to regroup and add a one to the next place value really helped me eliminate these possible answer choices and then something I just thought about I also could have realized well if a plus b plus 1 equals D and then a plus B equals C that means C would have been one less than D so I should have known that C was 0 the whole time but sometimes our brains work differently okay but if you follow this thought process you'll get to that answer either way it just it will be quicker the more and more times you do problems like these but as you're starting out you're really gonna have to make that organized list and then plug in those options to see if they work and then remember sometimes there are more than one solution okay a lot of times it's only a unique solution but sometimes there will be multiple solutions and that's what makes this fun thank you so much for checking us out today i hope this has helped i hope you'll take that same thought process and apply it and practice it please check out all our songs our timers all our video lessons we'd love to have you subscribe like comment let us know where you're watching from again thank you so much instruct the beats out